This Audi only has 100,000 miles on it, and we already got a $4,000 repair bill. Why? Let's get started. This is a 2017 Audi A4 S-Line with the 2.0 TFSI Turbo on it. Although they're very nice looking cars, and I do like Audi's looks. I really enjoy their driving characteristics. Most of them, when they hit 100,000 miles, they start forcing you to open your pocketbook, whether you like it or not. This one's no exception. And just like with many newer German cars, they're going plastic on everything. Everything's cheaply made, and they really have gone downhill pretty bad. This is Mercedes, BMW, Audi, all the different German makes. And Grimes even made a comment, if someone was going to give him a free Mercedes, it better be pre-2015. Because he said anything newer than that is garbage. That's coming out of Grimes' mouth. And that's, that's sad. Mercedes used to be the pinnacle of car design and quality. But anyways, back to the Audi. 100,000 miles, the turbo is blown and dead. The plastic water pump is dead. The valves are clogged. There's all kind of things going on with this four grand to get all this fixed. Before we dive in and show you all the damage, let's take a look around this car. It's actually really cool looking. So here is the front of this A4 and it says Quattro, which means it's all wheel drive and it has a splitter on it that's carbon fiber. It has a really nice look to it. It has a big grill. It's almost like a Lexus, Mrs. Wizard. It is. They seem to get bigger and bigger. All the bigger to eat you with, I guess. BMW's grills are getting bigger as well. Maybe it's uh, something that's cool now with the, with the young kids. And down this side, it is a little dirty. They drove it to get here during the rain. And it's got black wheels, which are nice. White. I like the white on black. It really looks nice. Mrs. Wizard's Maserati is the same. As we come around to the back, you can see it has black rings here on the auto union symbol. That's what they used to be is auto union. Here is carbon fiber spoiler and also there's a diffuser down below that is carbon fiber as well. Dual exhaust even though it's a four cylinder. It's a really nice looking vehicle. Let's hop under the hood. And here we have a half torn apart engine. We can see over here that the old turbo is completely missing because it is dead. It is a very, very common Audi problem. On the other side, which is kind of interesting on these engines, is the water pump is not driven off of the timing chains or a serpentine belt, the main belt. It's driven in the back by this tiny little belt. You can see all down the block this thing's been spraying coolant. It's been leaking pretty bad. It's really a shame because these engines, when they're working good, they're very powerful. They're actually really good engines as far as that's concerned. But when they get past 100,000 miles, just like the Q5 that we had in here, it's had a cylinder head. It had a turbo replaced, the same issue with its turbo. A lot of things go downhill really fast on these. As I mentioned, there's lots of plastic on these newer German cars. Let's take a look. The oil filter housing there is plastic. The timing cover is plastic. This structural member here is plastic. All these clips and little lines, those, those are usually plastic on cars. A little PCV valve or the crankcase ventilation there is all plastic. And these little cam magnets are plastic as well. So is a lot of the parts we've taken off. Plastic in itself is not a bad thing. It just doesn't like the heat of an engine. After so many miles and hours of running and heat, cold, heat, cold, those kind of cycles that go on, plastic gets very brittle. And it can crumble, it can break, it can crack, just like the water pump did on this. We'll show you here in a minute, but before we dive into that and start looking at numbers, let's let Mrs. Wizard show you guys around the interior. Oh, ladies and gents, the wizard is wrong. It only has 93,113 miles on it. Okay, not a huge difference, but again, okay, there's a slight difference. Love the digital dash there. Looks really nice. Obviously, it's really clean, and this is going to present very well today. Dash is in really great condition. Have a nice screen in the center area as well. Move down. Got our HVAC controls, other controls for 
road controls and things of that nature. Love a little 12 volt back there. There's our engine start stop button. And we see it has some nice silicone red coasters down below. They're gonna accent nicely with the rest of the vehicle. Got some simple controls for the radio down here as well, it looks like. More carbon fiber on our gear selector. Doesn't look like it's overly complicated here, but I guarantee in a second you're gonna find that that doesn't matter with the other features this car has. One thing that is really nice, and it wraps all the way around, is this kind of an ash-colored wood. It goes all the way there and up and all the way over. So we're used to seeing piano black or seeing a dark brown color, but the, here's a nice kind of an ash gray color. It looks really nice. The seats are a very soft brown colored leather and are very comfortable. Not a whole lot of bolster on the side, but they're still very comfortable nonetheless. We do have some of that brown leather on our door card as well with a little bit more of our dark gray accents and even some nice ash gray wood accents by our door handle. The back seat definitely changes the mood a little bit. As we move back here, you'll see we have lots of brown here in our seats and they're looking very nice. More leather matches the front seat. But as we move up, the entire headliner is kind of a been wrapped it appears with teddy bear no not really it's a nice kind of a soft brown kind of an alcantara as we end up at our steering wheel here's the fun part floppy paddles yes we have floppy paddles up here so even though he may not be very exciting even though he's carbon wrapped eh, that makes it so much more fun to drive so there's its saving grace and it has some of that lovely red accents that we've seen in other places throughout the ride so enough of this interior talk. Let's get this thing up in the air and see what we see on the underneath. One thing you guys probably saw when we were lifting the vehicle is the little drain bucket down there. It's actually low profile. It's very handy to have. It's very nice. You can just slide under. It's not so tall that it can't fit and it can sit there and catch drips. Let's go ahead and take a look underneath. Look at there guys, more plastic. The whole lower oil pan. It's black plastic. Luckily it's not leaking, other than this was coming from the water pump, all this sludge, we'll be cleaning that off, but that came from the coolant leak that you saw up above. As you can see, our turbo has been removed. We're gonna be showing you that here in a minute. Let's check out these wheels. See if your boots are okay. Brakes are, brakes are about 60 or 70 percent and they're good. Nothing loose there. CV boots are good there. Brakes are about 60, 70 percent. Nothing loose there. Again, you can see a lot of this wetness here was the water pump that was leaking. And look, even more plastic. The transmission oil pan is plastic. This is actually kind of a transaxle on this one. Since it's a quattro, it can send power to the front wheels right here. And while we're at it, we can also take a look at our steering boots, which look good. And while we're looking at it, back there you can see that honeycomb structure. The bottom of the motor mounts are even plastic. How about that? Here's the back of our transaxle and our drive shaft. Everything's good there. We move back to the back. Here's our single exhaust. Drive shaft is good there. And we can see it splits into two here. A little Y pipe and makes it dual exhaust. And then we have more plastic. Now, this is actually nice. It's a little shield there. Our CV boots are good there. Nothing loose there. Brake pads are probably 80% or something or more on there. No leaking shocks. CV boots are good over here. Brakes are good over here. Nothing loose going on there. Nothing loose there. No blown out shock. Let's go ahead and check our tires. So here we see 30th week of 2022. So they're only a couple years old. So the tires are good to go. Let's get this thing back on the ground. Oh, is there, uh, it looks like we've got the shell game again. Yes, it kind of does. Can do the whole switcheroo thing again. This customer actually came in just for a check engine light with turbo performance codes. That's it. And it turned into this huge ball of things that need to be replaced. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at the turbo. This is the old one. And what fails on these Audi 2.0 turbos is actually right here. Watch this. Look how much play is in there. What this thing connects to is the wastegate. Look at that. Even when the actuator would close this, there's so much play it could never seal and it can never hold boost. There are people actually commented on our last video we did on an Audi Turbo. Oh, I would redo bushings. I'd have it machined. That's, that's not a smart move. The reason why is because the, the labor to pull this all apart is not much different to just replace it with a new one. Whether you fix this one or put the new one in, it's the same labor. You still have to pull the turbo out in order to disassemble it and send it to a machine shop. And even if they could put a bushing in there, why would you put your old 100,000 mile turbo back in when you just spent all the labor to pull it off? Why would you do that? Another reason why we didn't try to repair this one as well, let me show you why. This impeller is very hard to turn. See it kind of jerks. I don't even know if it was working. It seized up in there. Let's compare it to the new one. Here's that same shaft that goes to the wastegate. Nothing. Completely tight. Let's take a look inside, pull the little cover off. Let's turn the turbo on this one. Look at that, I can spin it with my finger. Happy, happy. So why would you put an old turbo that's half locked up with a messed up wastegate shaft? No, we're not going to do that here. They're getting a brand new turbo, which depending on where you get it is anywhere from 12 to 1400 bucks, just for the turbo. We haven't done anything about taking the old one out yet. That's just buying the new turbo. And while we were there, Danielson's doing this job. He's like, wizard, I keep smelling coolant. It's really strong. And I haven't taken anything apart yet that has anything to do with coolant. I said, well, check it out, see what you find. And he went to looking around. And just like happens with so many Audis, where you thought, okay, this much money for a new turbo. Oh no, just wait, there's more. Look guys, more plastic. The whole water pump is plastic, except for the cover here. And look at this, where they make the seam at the factory is leaking and also all around here is just spraying out of a crack that's in the side of this plastic. It's got electronics and all kinds of things going on with it. This is no longer any good. And like I mentioned, it has a little belt, like you saw in there, it connects here and turns the water pump. Here's a brand new OEM Audi water pump. So why don't I put a metal water pump in? There isn't one. This is all there is. Unfortunately, in another 100,000 miles, I'd probably have to put another one on again. It's kind of a bummer. But wait, there's more. While we have it apart, we're going to keep on adding to the bill there's so many things going on here. A customer could get mad and say, I just want my turbo fix. Stop trying to add things to the bill. Are you really going to put this back on and leave it that way? Spray we saw the coolant on the bottom of the transmission. This thing is literally spraying it out. But we're not done. We're going to add to the bill even more. Let's go look at the intake ports. So I pulled one of the little dividers out and you can see that there's tons of carbon and gunk all built up around the valve stems and all in the shroud around the valve. So are we actually going to put the intake back on and just pretend we didn't see that because we don't want to pay for it? No, we're not going to do that. We don't do that kind of work here. We're going to clean those and do it proper and then put the intake back on with a new water pump. Do you see how this is adding up so fast? The customer was actually kind of shocked when we called and told him, it's like, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. You really have to fix these things. There's none of these that are going to be something you can get by a little while longer. They literally have failed completely. What do you do? So I actually talked with the customer about some of the things we found and the customer is actually curious about the water pumps. How bad could this get? What could actually happen? Where we saw that it was separating at the seam, there's kind of a plastic welded seam from the factory. It could finally just completely let the floodgates open, break open, and lose all the coolant all over the place, and then overheat the engine, 
and possibly ruin the engine. That would be really, really bad. The things that are wrong on this car cannot be skipped or cannot be budgeted. So let's try to get the build a little cheaper. If you're trying to do that on this car, you probably shouldn't even start working on it. It's just the way it is. Luckily, the customer called back a little while later after they kind of looked at their finances and they said, I understand where you're coming from. I really don't want my car back with all this broken stuff on there. Let's get it fixed. Let's get it done. I'll pay the bill. And he's totally agreeing on the price, which I told you is around $4,000. But all the parts are here. All the new parts have arrived today. Danielson actually gets to reassemble this. And then we will have a car that's not in limp home mode because of the turbo not about to spray coolant all over the road and have a breakdown and also carboned up valves. All those things need to be addressed. If you're curious what kind of tools we use to work on this Audi or really any other vehicle in the shop, check our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. If you purchase anything there, we get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And also check out Mrs. Wizard's Way. She's got a lot of videos there. You ought to go check out really cool videos and the auctions are going on for the part work. She's been working really hard in the back of the shop. Really beautiful pieces. They're really nice. You want to go check that out. The link's down there as well. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button here because we have a full month of cars waiting to come in, which means more videos for you guys. Thanks for watching.